Right, well, it's, uh, what are we doing today? Well, I'm just going to be doing what I'm doing. Yesterday I did it with some music. <laughs> today I'm just going to be drawing for myself again, just drawing from my imagination. Yeah. Uh, right, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to continue making up poses from my imagination and, and having fun. And, um, yeah, you can hang around with me while I do that, or you can indeed continue with your work. Now, um, I've already got a pose in my head. But it's, I think this one's going to be quite challenging. Um, what I like, what, what, what I think animators have that many illustrators don't have is, is that when we come up with poses, we really try to get inside um, the personality of the character. And I think when I talk about animators like that, I talk mainly about the Disney school of animation you know where you don't just want to think of the silhouette of the character um, as a cool silhouette you know a typical silhouette like an action pose silhouette you want to kind of really convey the character's <coughs> personality and what that character's mood is in the silhouette now I'm I've got something in my head that I want to try and get out and I'd like to start with this kind of thing she's gonna be wearing a big loose shirt so this is gonna I've got to think about how I can keep those things I love the 80s if you noticed <laughs> so when I, I pose this character I like to for me, it's like less is more. Like yeah, you can still be kind of cute and sexy or whatever, but like in this image, for example, like just this tiny little bit of her butt cheek, just a tiny little bit there says a lot more for me than a big, you know, just completely revealing, you know, salacious drawing. I'll do a couple of anatomy passes because this is going to be a challenging pose. This is without a doubt, especially from imagination. And I like to do it. I like to pose from my imagination because sometimes when I look, looking at reference is great and all that. But sometimes I lose, I lose the, um, I get more rigid sometimes. It's good. You should look at reference. You should always look at reference. But for me, there's a place, you know, I understand when Milk Carl, you know, sometimes didn't want to look at reference because um, there's a certain naivete that give that has a charm and appeal about the stuff. Drawing is a really good gift, you know. I can see why certain religious fundamentalists would call it a sin because they'd say boy you got a dirty mind like big 80s hair you know always and this is gonna come frame the face like this but then come behind And I might have a few loose strands of hair, but she's got thick hair. Big, bushy, thick, 80s wavy hair. Strange. Why this so accurate, though? Well, thank you. It's so accurate because you've got to learn and notice the anatomy. It's probably not accurate, but um, it's accurate enough. <laughs> so you see... I really want this to be as appealing as I can because then you want to keep upping the bar so you want to start at a very high standard because then you know it, things tend to always get worse okay and the challenge there's going to be many challenges with this drawing um, the other challenge will be to, to make the drapery and the clothes 
um, complement the silhouette. Well, I would like to say Jasmine vibes in there, but I've really outgrown all that stuff now. Uh, Maharashi Gautam. I mean, I did. Uh, Jasmine was uh, my crush when I was a little kid. Um, I wanted to marry Jasmine and I ended up marrying Jasmine. My wife is very Jasmine-esque. Um, I don't know. Some of you might have seen my wife. Some of you might have not seen my wife. Okay. But uh, this character is, is literally based on my wife. She might kill me for showing you this. Okay. So there she is there. So that's basically the inspiration. So if you say there's Jasmine vibes going on, um, it's actually AMB lady vibes. There's this. Okay. Okay. So that's that's who this character is based on. So I get a lot of people online telling me, oh, it looks like um, Jasmine, which I think is a compliment. But when people say that it looks like Elisa Maza from the Gargoyles, I kind of know that they're complimenting me because they they probably like gargoyles, but that's such a low grade, badly animated TV show that I always think, bloody hell, man! <laughs> I mean, no, please don't associate my work with that. So I'm all the time wanting the expression, so I'm really keeping this really, really simple with my lines. I'm not even trying to get the the eyes particularly. Um, nicely drawn at the moment i'm more focusing on the expression um it's already even in construction it's already kind of to model but i'm wanting the model to um be uh i'll have to i can pull the model into place afterwards so here we have the nose Notice how I make this shape to get the underside of the nose. And now, now I, I like to have this graphic shape of the mouth, but we have to try and tie it together. Okay, so I've got to think about, I'm going to put a kind of square here and a square here. Okay, this is the front portion and we're just going to do something like that. So again, you say drawing without reference. I always say drawing without reference. But you see, the character is based on my wife. Uh, I know my wife very well. So when I draw, I'm, I've got an instant reference from the beauty of my imagination uh, based off of something. So um, uh, when I say drawing without reference, I'm mainly talking about getting the anatomy right, getting the proportions right, being able to do all that stuff without reference. You see here it's proportioned very much like a, more like a real um, woman, which I do not like. Well, I like real women, but um, I like big-headed Disney girls, okay? That's what it is. For example, like the model in in the construction phase, I like to try and capture the model with this area here. Like, okay, so there could be many ways to go. Like, so with my with my um, wife's model, I know that her eyes are gonna generally be like this. Okay, and I can change this shape. So my roughing is sort of to model in the construction and then I do something with the maxilla with like that hey Selena Nina is online right so there we are now I've sort of pulled it together a little bit more um, I'm I'm kind of liking it I'm not liking this leg at the moment I'm not liking that leg so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lock down this part of the drawing a bit more i think the shapes here could be nicer okay i really really want to i know that once i put the shirt on it and rely on other things i can really really um get away with a lot of stuff to be honest with you but i want again i like to show you what um now why is it doing this okay. i like to show you what hardcore hand-drawn Disney animators used to 
really um and ah with over the day. Right, so I'm liking this, but I'm going to push it even further. But this is a stage where I'm saying, okay, well, I'm kind of, kind of happy with that. Okay, I can see some problems here. Okay, that's not right. Okay, we want it all to come to this point. Okay, so that's need to this is always a process of refining um, and the sleeve there's going to be a little bit of a bend in the arm but there's a so that I've got to think there's a little bit of like I'm working with triangles and squares at the moment because it's easier for me okay to kind of get to where I want to be so I'm gonna kind of think I could think of this as a straight line but I'm gonna bring this out and taper this curve around here to marry against against that so I'm just intuitively working here, um, trying to get that. Now the seam of the, the shirt is going to not be on the shoulder line because it's oversized, okay? So now I'm going to have this coming down and buckling over here like this. And then we could, I'm just going to put a line here. I might want to eliminate these lines afterwards, but I'm putting kind of drapery lines in there that, that, <laughs> again, if you study drapery again as well, you'll you'll understand uh, the the kind of simple lines that you can use to um, to create that effect. Now, see, Kirk, look, I'm using a square here, but we can't have drapery as square. But like, that's how what I was kind of talking to you about earlier. It's like thinking about how to how to manage and understand things. So. The real skill for me is when the draftsmanship goes beyond the the structure, okay? You see this is this is how I like to finish a drawing. I like to think about really really getting the most out of my shape. So I get the anatomy to a point where I'm happy with it. Initial pass is my anatomy pass. Okay? Then I have a, um, then I start eliminating the anatomy and have a shape pass, okay? But then once that shape pass is done, okay? See, I'm feeling I'm losing too much anatomy in there, so I'm going to just harshen that a little bit like that. Cleaning the eyes up for me is the hardest part because when it's all rough, it's all, yeah, yeah, their eyes, they look like, they look good, but cleaning the eyes up and getting that expression to stay when the lines are clean is the hardest part up out and down so it's going to be coming up out and down so up up out okay so that's very important you want to get the the angle the dimension of the hair right okay that's then you're gonna curl those things I don't want to just do a, a rough sketch and paint on top of it because I you know I want to offer something that that you might not know which is how to draw a nice drawing before you paint it okay um, a lot of a lot of it can be hidden with the painting but I want you to understand particularly if your interest is in animation, that it isn't about, you know, doing a rough drawing and then doing a, a nice painting on top of it all the time. You know, you've got to be able to, to draw nicely. You've got to be able to really have understanding. Now, you see, sometimes when you look at these drawings, you say, well, how can her elbow be here like this? And you try to visualize. But when we when we did it right, if we look at the original pass, you've got to understand, that's why knowledge of drapery is very, very important. If I blacken that in, you can see what she looked like. So it's all, it's all working as it should, um, which is why I love doing these drawings. I love, as I said, I love taking my time and making these drawings the way they are because I like to, I like to, to really go in there and put the things to the best of my knowledge. So can you see like how highlight and shadow will add a lot to that hair? Okay, because 
it's sometimes like Maharshi, you raise a really interesting point because although like I'm, I've, I've lost concentration and I'm having too much fun with my audience, sometimes when you want to get the texture of something right, having too much line is just, it's just not going to do the job. So I'm going to rely on the shape and the outline. Let's see if, 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 if I was going to do it with line, I would then find a highlight point like that. Okay, let's be serious now. Too much, too much mucking around. Okay, and then I would find another point like that, and then I would. You see how you can start, um, you can start making a better sense of it like that. So I could might come off here like this, might come off here like this. There, there we go. Three hours of just fun. Um, we did a nice drawing. Uh, let me flip it. Storyboard flip selected scene. There might be a few things I might need to do to it. Um, I'll decide afterwards. I'm going to go right now. Um, okay, people. I will see you again some other time. Thank you. Bye-bye.